Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I'm Todd. I'm Lana. Uh, we're going to talk to talk about something super sexy today, <laughs> which is rental uh, vacancies. Um, so we have this number from the Census Bureau, mm -hmm. and it says that according to the U.S. Census Bureau, rental vacancy rates during the fourth quarter of 2021, which was the last full quarter that we have data for, fell f to 5.6%, the lowest since 1984. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, you're probably saying, well, 5.6%, that means one in 20 houses are vacant. That doesn't sound like that much, but that is actually extremely low mm -hmm. because of something very uh, simple. There's always people moving in and out of rental, so you always have a vacancy period. But the fact that it's 5.6% means literally the only vacant rentals you have are the people are the ones in transition, right? Right. So to kind of give you an example, uh, I had a rental uh, that I property managed and uh, it came vacant at, at the end of October. Uh, I put it on the market as coming soon, a couple weeks before the tenant moved out. We didn't show the property. We didn't have anything, uh, any real marketing material because the, the tenant was still living there, was in the process of moving. But I did put it up in, in coming soon status and I'm not making this up that I was doing the walkthrough with the tenant and uh, making sure that the house was in good shape and that sort of thing. The tenant hands me the keys. In the door walks a person wanting to see the property. They look at the property. They sign the lease. I hand over keys and we're done. We did not have a day's worth of vacancy on this house. So just because you see that uh, number at 5.6% doesn't mean that these houses are vacant for even a moment. In this particular case, the house did not lose a single day's worth of rent. Uh, and it's because there just isn't enough inventory. The other thing is, you know, there are a lot of uh, tenants uh, out there that are very fr frustrated. Um, a shout out to Dominic that I met from YouTube uh, and, and he's looking for a rental here in Las Vegas and he's very frustrated because the rentals that he's looking at are not inexpensive, uh, they are dated, uh, they're not particularly uh, clean and you know the, yep. um, the, what he has to come up with in this rental market is first month's rent, last month's rent, security deposit, pet deposit application fee cleaning deposit cleaning deposit and that that was what what really upset him was the was the cleaning deposit because the house was not particularly clean yeah maybe the last guy um, didn't clean it so yeah. <laughs> yeah um experts say many factors are responsible for astronomical rents including nationwide housing shortage extremely low rental vacancies and unrelenting de demand as young adults continue to enter the crowded market we've talked about demographics we're we're at a point where we have this demographic shift that's mm -hmm. happening um, probably the last time we had this big of a demographic shift was the World War II baby boom. Mm -hmm. When the, all the soldiers came back from overseas, they got married and they, there was a huge demand for housing. The way we fixed it back then was home building. It took a decade, but we had to build houses like crazy. So uh, the home building thing became a big thing in the late 40s and homes were built all over. That's why when you drive around to like a, a lot of markets, especially anywhere near where there were military bases, San Diego, New York, places like that. You see all these homes built in the late 40s, early 50s, mm -hmm. like a lot, a whole neighborhoods that were built during that time. And the reason they were built during that time is because there were all these people that they needed, they needed uh, housing for. But the fact that we're at the lowest point of rental vacancies in the last 40, 40 years is pretty astounding. It that is. shows more of that uh, demographic right. shift. So, you know, it's interesting because they needed to build homes so quickly, they built them kind of uh, Lego style. So you see a lot of these cinder block homes. The other thing you'll see is a builder didn't give you a choice mm -hmm. of floor plan. So the ver one very common way they did it was it's basically a rectangle with a garage. Mm -hmm. And you see these homes all over the U.S. They were very popular in, um, in like Long Island and in New York. You see them in SoCal and these older neighborhoods mm -hmm. where 
the homes all look the same as you drive down the street. And some people, of course, have redone their homes. They've added a second floor or whatever. But if you look, all the homes are exactly the same. Right. So there, there are these L-shaped homes where when you're looking at the house, you're looking at the front door and maybe a couple windows on, on either side. And then you've got the garage right here. You've got the kind of the, the driveway that, that goes like this. We've all seen them. Uh, so there, there were lots of those. And then there were the other style that had, that was a complete rectangle where you had, you know, the garage, window, front door, window, and that was it. Yeah. Um, so uh, something else that's driving the housing market is, in addition to that, is that traditionally builders have built multifamily like apartment complexes, mm -hmm. right? They are forgoing that to mm -hmm. build more luxury slash high rise. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I don't necessarily mean high, like, you know, rentals in downtown New York City. What I'm saying is, like for example, in Las Vegas, we have these new buildings coming online, but the buildings are, you know, rent for an apartment is over 2,000 bucks mm -hmm. a month. Uh, they have like gym, beautiful gyms mm -hmm. in them. They're, they're really high end. They're very nice. Right. They're in more affluent areas. Usually they're in areas where there's a lot of amenities. Um, and you know, they're not just like, oh, we're just going to throw up a bunch of units and try to get 700 bucks a month. They're not doing that. They're, right. they're, they're, it's come to a point where they need to get the money out of them. The way to get the money out of them is to is to provide a you know a little higher end experience. Right, and a lot of that is of course because uh, the cost of materials is really high right now. The cost of labor is really high right now, so they need to get that money back out. Um, so that that's part of that reason, and part of the reason why we're seeing this whole generation kind of flood the housing market is because. Uh, remember, they stayed home longer than maybe our generation did. They've, they've been hanging out in their parents' basements, uh, and then you know, with the with the pandemic, the house got really crowded because now the, the rest of the family was home too. Uh, so they're they're getting out, they're getting out on their own, and they are coming into the housing market. And so they're taking up units uh, that maybe were not uh, we we didn't see them in the marketplace as much before a couple of years ago. Uh, we have a chart here, rising rents. Now this is not the top 10. This is this is a sample. Obviously Miami would be number one on here if we put it, but this is just a, gives you an example of the percentage change and typical rental price in different markets. Uh, Miami of course has had the most. They've had over 50% rental increases. This changes over a two year period. So this is a, this is a looking at a two year period. Mm -hmm. The most interesting thing on here is Las Vegas, 32.9% <laughs> uh, with 1,800 median rent. Um, and then if you look at the bottom, San Jose, which has had you know 3,000 bucks a median rent, but then it's it hasn't changed very much because of you know it, they've had a net outflow of people. Mm -hmm. You know, so it hasn't been like they have this huge demand because they're just, it's not like people are flooding to San Jose. It's already expensive. Um, same with Boston, same with Chicago. Uh, actually, be interesting to see if Chicago, if this doesn't decrease. We did a video on this. Chicago actually has 6,000 units in the city that are in buildings that are vacant right now. Mm -hmm. 6,000 vacancies in the city. These are not for sale or, no, they were rentals, weren't they? They were rentals. They're rentals. There's 6,000 rentals or 6,000 rentals that are just not rented. And they were, we saw some We saw some of them that were like, what, 1,800 bucks. They weren't that mm -hmm. bad. Mm -mm. And they had nice views and they were, you know, in the city, if you live in the city of Chicago, it's pretty cheap to get a rental. You can't get that in New York City or San Francisco. Right. right? You know, but the, of course the question is, uh, you know, are they having a population influx or not? So my guess is no, they're Illinois probably not. Illinois people are leaving. Uh, which is why they've got so many vacant units. Yeah, so maybe, you know, these things lag. Uh, but the reason we wanted to share this with you is because, you know, the rental markets going up means that people are like, it, they, it pushes them. If there was a big disparity between rents mm -hmm. and home prices, people would just rent. But when renting is expensive, that, that makes them look at what it would cost to purchase. Mm -hmm. So rents going up sort of feeds the housing market and then the housing market you know, feeds rents too. So these things sort of move in tandem. What's interesting too, one last thing to sort of point out is that you're probably saying, well, home prices are going up, rents are going up, but what's gonna happen when home prices fall, rents collapse, not exactly, and here's an example. Median home, median rentals in Las Vegas in 2006 were $1,200. Mm -hmm. At the bottom of the market, when the prices, median prices dropped to like 135 from 310, so mm -hmm. they dropped like 60, 70%. 
rents only dropped like a hundred bucks. Median rent was eleven hundred. So it wasn't like rents just collapsed. They because st- the problem was is these people that were living in homes that they had owned got foreclosed. They couldn't afford to. They couldn't buy. Mm-hmm. No one gave them a loan, so they all became renters. So the homes got filled up with renters. So it helped the housing market. So it's you know we don't know what's going to happen in a year or two. Nobody does, but this is just the trajectory we're seeing. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, there's obviously we see all this downward pressure, but it's not downward pressure that would cause the market to do this. It's downward pressure. It's going to cause the market to kind of flatten out, mm-hmm. hopefully, and chill out and do something that's less because uh, right now it's pretty expensive. Right for people. Look, an exciting market is not good for anybody, so we're we're looking forward to a boring market. We're looking forward to a boring market. <laughs> um, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and leave us a comment.